So let's talk a little bit about the idea of effect modification. Now this also gets known as interaction or sometimes moderation. Interaction is usually the term used when looking at predictive modeling rather than uh, effect size modeling, but um, quite often they're used interchangeably. Moderator is one you hear uh, less often, but effect modification or sometimes interaction is the term you hear for this. Now, what this is, is it suggests that the effect that x1 has on y, right, b1, that depends on another variable, which we're going to call x2. Or we can think of it is that we need to have multiple b1s, right? We need to have multiple, multiple coefficients. The effect that x1 has on y depends on x2, depends on some other variable, or it's modified by that other variable. So in health research, quite often age, sex, and race are quite common to be effect modifiers, or at least ones um, worth exploring. In a moment, I'll write down some of the criteria. I just want to think through some examples of what an effect modification looks like. So. Uh, a few examples, we might be looking at what effect does some drug, some drug or some treatment, have on some health outcome. Okay. And a potential effect modifier would be sex, okay, biological sex. And what that would mean is if the effect that the drug has on some outcome changes depending on if the individual is male or female. Right? So maybe the drug works well for females, but not very well for males. But that's an example of effect modification. The effect that this has on the outcome is modified by this other variable. Another example that we can think of is maybe we're looking at the effect of sun exposure. So spending uh, an hour in the sun, or some unit of exposure on um, your risk of skin cancer. And so we want to say, what effect does every additional hour spent in the sun do to your risk of skin cancer? And a potential effect modifier might be race. So the effect of spending time in the sun, the effect that that has on your risk of skin cancer, might change depending on um, the race you're categorized as. All right, so again, the thought there being that lighter skin um, is going to be more susceptible to getting skin cancer. Every extra hour spent in the sun is more damaging if your skin is lighter or less damaging if it's darker. So these are all ideas of potential effect modifiers um, conceptually. Let's write down the criteria. And the first one, I'm sure you can guess by now, makes sense conceptually. So this diagram makes sense conceptually that the effect that x1 is having on the outcome could be modified by x2. Okay. <clears throat> we don't need to know for sure if it is, but if we knew everything, we wouldn't be collecting data and fitting models. But hypothesizing that it could be an effect modifier, that that makes sense. Right? Like these ones, we don't know for sure, um, especially with a drug. Right? We don't know if the drug's going to work differently for males or females. But depending on the type of drug, that hypothesis might make sense, that we might think it might be more effective or less effective for one or the other. Second criteria is that X2 is not on the pathway. between x1 and y. Okay, so I've tried to draw this diagram carefully to indicate x2 is not sitting in the middle there. It's not mediating the relationship. It's just changing it. Right? The effect that x1 has on the outcome changes depending on x2. Um, I just want to kind of go back to here. Okay. One way we can think of it is that we need multiple coefficients. Right? Here we need to say, what's the effect of the drug on the health outcome for males? And what's the effect of the drug for females? Right, so we're going to need a B1 coefficient for an effect for males and an effect for females. 
And then another criteria is that numerically, the effect modifier should be statistically significant. And a few things I want to say there. Later, we're going to, later in this course, we're going to see the statistical test for testing um, significance of effect modification. And I also want to put in the reminder, we don't want to get stuck on statistical significance too much, right? Um, but what I want to say is, more than just making sense conceptually, there should be some statistical evidence that there is effect modification. And again, I don't want to get stuck on the p-value for the effect modification is 6% versus 4%, and for that to entirely change our conclusion. But really what this is meant to flag is more than just thinking there's effect modification, having some statistical evidence that there is. Okay, so um, I'm not going to say too much more on this right now for a few reasons. We're going to look at a few examples of effect modification in R. So looking at our data set, trying to explore how that works and what it looks like um, in our data. And there's also a few other videos that I'm going to have you watch that, again, explains the concept of effect modification. So that's um, where we'll park it for now, but the idea of, well, all these ideas we've talked about, confounding, collinearity, mediation, effect modifiers, they're going to flow through the entire course. Every time we look at different regression models, we're going to always refer back to these, right? Effect modification is effect modification regardless of the type of outcome we're working with. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.